So, you got an idea for a campaign. Sounds really exciting. I'm excited for you. Uh, you've got gods, you've got places, you've got some NPCs. But now it's time to turn to the actual story. What do you do now? That's the question. And that's what this video is about. We will be moving the ball forward a little bit on our campaign, this series of videos on how to create a campaign from scratch. We're going to move the ball forward a little bit and start thinking through how to create the entire campaign built with the building blocks of adventures. Each adventure, which I think of as the basic building block of a campaign, the night, the couple of nights, the three or four nights it takes for us to have games uh, where players are working towards a goal with their player characters, and each one of those adventures moves our story forward in our campaign, this bigger story we're trying to tell. So, thanks for joining us again on GM Tips. I am Raven's Ma. Get ready for the second in our series on how to create a campaign from scratch. Okay. Here we are again in my brand new campaign called The War of the Mountain Gods. I'm going to sounding. So here's the idea is I'm going to walk through um, a little bit more into how I would start creating a campaign from scratch uh, and just thinking through some of the brainstorming ideas, some of the um, you know, some of the things that I think would get me started in the process. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I actually am going to create a timeline. So I've got all these characters. And again, you may ask why I've got these goofy pictures here. These are just the, the stock pictures that come with the, um, uh, the, the scabbard, you know, when we create an item in there, an entry in there, it just automatically gets grabs these pictures. I'm not going to do any pictures during this. Um, you may see a couple, but mainly I'm not going to do any. So you can add that yourself if you're uh, working on your online campaign. I'm going to start with the War of the Mountain Gods. So this is an event. And the reason I'm going to start with that is if I go into the War of the Mountain Gods, you'll see on here that I can go into edit. Uh, when I click edit, um, I, all I've got is just this basic description here. I'm not going to add too much more in there besides this description right now. I may come in later and do that, but I'm actually going to go down here to the bottom because I want to get kind of an idea of how long my backstory is going. One of the most important parts of starting a campaign is you have to have some kind of backstory for your world, okay? And I am starting with a brand new world here. Right, we we would expect our players to do the same thing. We want them to have some idea of you know how did they end up being a fighter or a rogue or a space captain. What's what's the background behind where their characters coming from? And then it's really cool as as you know as a as a game master is that you can start to integrate that into the development of your campaign storyline. That's the hope, right? Car uh, the player characters have a backstory, so the world has a backstory, and, and, and those things should integrate, right? So um, I'm going to start here. We're going to start uh, month one, day one, year one, all right? Uh, one. Uh, let's go with some random year. Let's go two, five, one. And that is the beginning of our campaign backstory, all right? Um, and we'll save that, and I'll show you. This is kind of cool. I can go now to my uh, campaign main page here uh, and you'll see now I have a timeline right so the timeline now includes the war of the mountains where I can click on that and it tells me a little bit about it and as I add some of these backstory elements as I think through things I'm like oh okay wait 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 I need to figure out when did this happen so it led to you know a player character getting I don't know, orphaned in their village, right? So I can start to add that in. And really, you know, hopefully the player characters will start to integrate their own um, backstories into this backstory. But now at least they have a date to start with. So that's kind of something I like to drop down in there. And in addition, I've also got a graph here. You'll see I can click on my graph uh, and I can go to the Craggy Towers. 
can see the craggy towers is uh, the neighbor of the blood fields uh the leader is general crod and this is all i've got so far so pretty straightforward little campaign so one of the things i like to do whenever i get started on a campaign is plot out uh, about how many adventures i want in my campaign now i think of a campaign as, as a pretty simple idea right so it is a progression towards a big goal within that progression towards a big goal there are uh, smaller goals right so um, checkpoints if you will along the way uh, and adventures should be focused in on what some of those checkpoints are on the way to the goal and the, the other thing that i whenever i think about a campaign is i think about the adversary as my character okay so my character is the the adversary in the story so i need to think through as the game master what is the plot what is the action step what are the action steps for my characters in this case the adversaries of our hero uh which are going to be the player characters i mean a good role-playing game has a hero in the story and the hero should always always be the player characters npcs can be supporting heroes they can be supporting characters but in the end you want the player characters and the players themselves to feel like they are the heroes of the story okay which means you are the hero if you will you are the writer the the designer of the storyline of the adversary so that's what i'm going to do right now i'm actually going to bring in a template that I made for one of my other campaigns to think through how to create a campaign. Uh, how do I get to templates? So uh, your templates are down here. I won't have any in my brand new campaign. So I'm actually gonna uh, pull one from another campaign and here's how you do that. So uh, you can go up here to tips and tools. You go to something called the content exchange. And before we ever got started on this, I actually uh, created a gold star entry for one of my other campaigns. Gold star entry just means, uh, you know, it's got pictures, it's got uh, some text, it's got connections. And the reason I wanted to make it a gold star is once a page is gold star, I can share it with the content exchange. And so I can now go on here and I can look for my shared uh, item and I'm gonna have to find it here. We'll just do recency and there it is so i created it very recently november the 18th you see it there uh the campaign plan so this is one of the, a gold star entry that i created for one of my other campaigns and mainly because i wanted to use it in this one so i'm going to click clone i'm going to pick the campaign i wanted to go to war of the mountain gods and i'm going to clone it to my campaign and boom it pulls it in and by the way now i can find this anytime boy hey i just leveled up how exciting um so uh i can find this now because it's cloned in my campaign you'll see it now in my templates what is a template a template just simply allows me to create let's say a template for role playing uh for a, a player character you could have like a stats block in there you could create a uh, a template for a town or an item so you know you're going to have similar stats like how much damage the item does or how many people live in the village you can sort of lay that out in sort of a format and create that and then you just click on it um, for it to be a campaign and I'll show you where you do that so if I click on this guy here for edit uh, you can see here is template true All right pretty straightforward so now that is in my campaign and I'm gonna clone it. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go to my templates and I'm gonna click clone. And we're gonna call this uh, War of the Mountains Plan. Clone template. And it's gonna take me now to this. And if I go to edit on this one, you'll see uh, the template is checked off, right? So now I've got a clone of a template, so it's just a normal page. All right, so let's take a look at this campaign plan and see if it's something that you might find of value. Uh, there's a lot of ways to plan a campaign. It's hard to keep track of all the different ways. I mean, you can go on YouTube and just say, plan a campaign, support systems. And there's tons of great GMs with all kinds of great plans, uh, story-based campaigns and um, um, 
they've got outlines you can download, anything like that. So I kind of made my own because I wanted to keep track of some things in a particular way. And this is what I made. So I've got a basic format for planning a campaign, right? So uh, let me just show you uh, what the, the format is here. It's pretty straightforward. I have adventures. I, I like to have somewhere between 12 to 20 adventures. It can be a long campaign. It can be a short campaign. So you could do a six adventure campaign, um, you know, but uh, I, I'd like to think of this in a sort of bigger way. And so I think I was thinking more like 12 to 14 uh, adventures. And remember, a, an adventure can be one session, but it might be multiple sessions. So an adventure might be uh, delving into a dungeon or, or um, saving a village from bandits. And that might take several sessions to get through, right? So, but I, and at this point in my planning, I am just looking at it by adventure, okay? And I think of adventures in three different ways. There's three types of adventures. And you can see my great picture here. There are three types of adventures. There's these skulls here, and I've got some treasure chests here, right? And then I've got my little uh, clown faces there. Um, what do those mean? <laughs> well, I explain it in the text up here, but uh, just to keep my keep track for myself, these skulls move the plot of the adversary along. Okay, each one of those adventures is my adversary doing something to move their goal forward. They're trying to move the ball forward to score whatever it is they're looking for. And, and sometimes a adversary does not have to be an intelligent being. An adversary could be a coming comet or a coming asteroid, right? But it's, it's, it's checkpoints along the way that get us closer and closer and closer to the end climax of the story. So I've got, as you can see, I've got eight, at least eight of those on here. Okay, then we've got these treasure chests. Now these are things, these are adventures where the player characters are gonna gain an advantage towards stopping the adversary's goal. Or, yeah, it, the idea is to stop the adversary's goal. Whoever the adversary is, the idea is to stop it. So these are advantages that they would gain. And it, maybe it's a sword they need to get or information or new allies or something like that to help them uh, give them an advantage at achieving their goal. Okay, and then I've got some clowns. Uh, these weird face clowns here are, um, these are adventures that are sort of tangents. Um, they aren't necessarily directly attached to moving the ball forward for our adversary, and they don't necessarily give an advantage at stopping the adversary. Maybe there's some good treasure, it could be a lot of danger, but it may be sort of a side quest, if you will. But I try to make them a little bit fun, a little bit interesting. You know, it, it can be one of these things like, um, uh, you know, they wake up one morning and they're in a haunted house and they have to find their way out, just as a fun adventure like that. Um, and, uh, and so that whole adventure is just focused on getting out of that haunted house. It doesn't really move forward the plot for the adversary and it doesn't really give them an advantage, but it does, maybe it gives them a level up or something like that. But other than that, it's really just meant sort of as a diversion, not a diversion, uh, just some, like, it can be a fun adventure. So I, I have like three of those in there. Now you can have more than this, right? So here's how this works. All right. If I go in here to edit this and I want to create my first adventure here. All right, and in my first adventure, um, save crods. Oops, gotta type that correct. Save K R A A D daughter. And what type of adventure this is? I, I actually want this to be an adversary adventure. All right, so um, minion. And in my campaigns, minions are people who essentially work for the adversary, and they are uh, completely focused on being against the player characters. So they have some animus towards the player characters and they, they are out to get them. In my campaigns, a lot of times the big, bad, evil force, person, mastermind, may not really care much about the player characters. Their goals are sort of bigger. The player characters are obstacles that get between them and their goal. But the minions have it in for the player characters. They want to destroy them. So this is gonna be a minion uh, kid kidnaps 
daughter. So let's, we'll just call this a minion. And we're going to call this uh, a... Um, uh, so in, in, in the way I ref, you know, refer to these, three types of well, the, the, the three types of adventures is my skull is the mastermind plot, right? And then the um, uh, treasure chest is an advantage plot, so getting an advantage against the, the, the adversary. And then the uh, evil clown is the side quest, the diversion. So we're going to call this a minion mastermind. And that allows me to think ahead. I, this is an event that should move the mastermind's plot along through the actions of the minion. So uh, Crod, uh, Crod's daughter kidnapped needs PC's help. Pretty straightforward there. What's the... Uh, Crod's... I can't even spell today. What in the world is going on? Maybe I should do speech to text or something. Kid, uh, Crod's daughter kidnapped uh, needs uh, need PC's help. Okay, effect. What's going to happen? This is really key because if they fail at saving the daughter, um, it should move the plot forward a little bit. If they succeed at saving the uh, general's daughter, that should move the, the plot forward. So fail... Uh, daughter dies, Crod, um, sets out for vengeance. I like that. All right. And there we go. Um, and then succeed, uh, daughter returns um, leads PCs to minion HQ that's pretty good so that way it doesn't matter if they succeed or fail because my PCs they write the plot and I need to be prepared for them to fail or to not take the quest right and we hope that doesn't happen but we, we need to be able to uh, move the story forward no matter what happens. So I've got that set there. All right, so I am going to save this. And now you can see right there, I've got save Crod's daughter, right? And you'll notice it automatically linked that because I actually have a character uh, named Crod's daughter. I haven't given her a name yet. All right, so the next thing that I do is I create an adventure. Now there's a couple ways to go about uh, creating an adventure. I have the adventure builder, which is an add-on for this um, um, uh, RPG campaign manager. And so I'm gonna actually use that, but you don't have to, right? So if you create an adventure and you haven't purchased it, it's gonna look like this guy right here, all right? So I tell you what, why don't we do that today? Why don't we create an adventure that uh, does not require the use of the adventure builder? So something pretty simple here. We'll call this save Crod's daughter. All right, um, daughter kidnapped, uh, PCs on the case. All right, and we might do a little bit of a mystery here is uh, why is she missing? Who took her and and where? Uh, how to get her back? Um, this is a first adventure in my campaign, so I wanna also put this here. We'll earn the hatred of Minion um, at the end of this adventure. So this is now going to be a permanent, um, permanent enemy that we're going to keep with it until, and we may make this like a sub plot is this minion and how he interrelates or she interrelates or it interrelates with the PCs and the PCs have to get out there and take care of her or it or him, right? Uh, and it'll be a fun way to move the ball forward in our campaign. All right, um, and we're gonna save that. Save Crod's daughter. All right, that is now a new adventure. Now check this out. I am now going to go back to my adventure plan. 
So we'll go to War of the Mountain Gods here. And War of the Mountain Gods plan is right there. My note, it's a note. And I'm actually going to pen it right here. And you'll see Save Crowd's Daughter, Create, and boom. And now I can start to keep track of my, uh, my campaign. So as I create new adventures, and I move these forward, I can have them listed here. Now, the, the reason I don't have this in any particular order is because campaigns may not move in that sort of chronological linear fashion. Player characters may choose to move in particular directions that surprise you. So this is just sort of laying the cards on the table, as you can see they're shaped like cards, in, in a way that it lets me know if the players feel like at the end of a particular can uh, adventure, they would like to do something a little bit fun, I will have my fun clown face adventure, my diversion adventure prepared. Or maybe they feel like they need an advantage. They're not ready to go up against the minion or the mastermind or whatever. They Maybe they uh, choose to go on one of these advantage building. Maybe they want to build some allies or get an item or something like that in order to gain an advantage. So I keep them in this uh, format here. And you should know you can add multiple pins. So uh, you know, this only has eight of the plot uh, pins here. You can add multiple pins to them. The idea is just to kind of keep them organized in my head. This adventure, this adventure, this adventure, this adventure. These are moving the plot forward for the mastermind. These adventures are just giving them an advantage. Okay, that is enough for today. I've got um, a fun adventure that I have built there. You can see I can click on adventures now. And here is Save Crod's Daughter. Right, my, my table of contents has exactly one item in it. If I go to my War of the Mountain Gods, you can see my table of contents now has several things in it. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is how to create a folder for your adventure, right? So when I create an adventure here, I'm gonna describe it and I'm gonna sort of script it out. But as I create items or NPCs or places related to that adventure, Here's the first thing that I do. I go over here and I create Save Crod's Daughter. Module folder. So this is my adventure to Save Crod's Daughter. And I, I just start throwing my entries into this folder, just like it's a real folder, right? So I can keep track of them all. And, um, and all you have to do to add those in there is I go to connections and I can, I can call this folder of adventure and then folder of character, Crod's daughter, right? Folder of character, we're gonna call it Crod's enemy. And General Crod is in this. Right, and then you, I could put my notes in here, I could put uh, items in there, uh, I can create encounters or events that happen in that module, things that happen that I wanna describe out, say an encounter is like a fight with some of the baddies, I can script out that entire encounter and put all the information in there, what kind of damage they do, what their AC is, I can create all that and put it inside an event, and I can connect things in there. The idea is to get all this stuff connected in together, and then of course, once you're done with that, I would highly recommend making it secret. All right, so I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna move this to secret. So now when I add my players in there, they can't see all this, okay? So each one of your entries can have secrets, but you can also make this folder secret so they can't find it. And now you can see I'm starting to really flesh out this is my module. This is going to be one of my first important adventures. You can call it whatever you want. Save a daughter adventure folder, whatever you want to call it. I put module. I'm old fashioned, right? All right, so that's it for today. We really appreciate you liking and subscribing our um, YouTube videos. We're going to continue doing this. I'm going to continue walking through this campaign for several weeks. And hopefully you can find videos that are valuable to you no matter where you are in the creation of your campaign. I am Raven's Maw. The best thing you can be doing right now is finding people you care about and having a great time. And I hope you're doing that right now.